let's start this devotion with a word of prayer lord we thank you and we praise you and we commit this evening into your hands lord as your word says that the meditation of your scripture be of great blessing to each one of us we ask lord lord i don't know lord why you are enabling us for whom you are making us to do these live sessions whatever brother david is doing lord let this effort bring fruit in its due time we pray lord let every effort let every life that is happening bring us closer to you and to you alone lord we don't want to do it as a program but we want to do with your presence we need your presence and we ask for your presence this evening lord speak to each one of us guide us lead us in jesus most holy precious name we ask amen uh this morning devotion i have actually done uh that is about devotion itself you know a devotion about devotion uh so yeah let me quickly go through certain verses how god wants us to be and how he yeah how he wants us to seek him so the devotion that i am talking about or in the sense is i i want us to understand whenever we are doing this devotion we are seeking the face of god so either it can be in the morning or it can be in the evening it can be any time it can be many times or n times a day but whenever we sit we set apart from our busy lifestyle and we we make an effort to sit so that we seek his face and countenance so on that note if that's the premise that i want to give if i have to really define devotion uh it, it is this that i'm talking about it is to seek his face on that note i'll i'll move forward understanding that the devotion means seeking his face now let us understand what bible speaks about seeking his face or how should we seek his face is something that i was pondering upon this morning so i really am surprised at times when people say when they speak about devotion they mean that they are talking about the whatsapp forward that they have received but <laughs> yeah <laughs> or the book that they refer it can be our daily bread and or it can be some yeah streams in the desert is one book that everyone you know almost everyone reads and there are many many devotionals devotionals so i want us to understand the difference between devotion and a devotional <clears throat> so uh, it's it's not that you go read over your whatsapp or maybe in the bible readers group or in whichever you group you might have been in it's not something that you read and understand about god but it is about seeking the face of god in itself it's not about about god but it is seeking the face of god in itself when i'm when i'm talking about the face of god i mean two things it is about the nature of god and the characteristics of god so we should always be you know aware of these two things the nature of god and the characteristics of god so uh, when i speak about the devotion i don't mean the whatsapp forward or some the five minute snippets that many pastors are making those are all really a blessing personally to me i i have listened to the first devotion i still remember uh when when pastor in bangalore started making two minute snippets back in 2009 so that 2009 2010 so that's the time where we used to log on to the website with the very limited speed that we had and we used to hear to to that two minutes you know podcast so it was very encouraging back then 
later, I don't know, somehow in this advancement of technologies, uh, I, I feel that we are very much being satisfied with what we read about God than what we really know about God. So it's very important in our lives to seek His face. So let's turn to the few, maybe uh, I think brother has those slides. He can also yeah, present that. I, I'll quickly share three, three views. So what does Bible say about seeking? It says to seek Him with all your heart. You know, we should learn to seek God. Whenever you sit to, you know, sit and start meditating, you know, you and I must learn to seek Him wholeheartedly. When we seek Him, we should do so wholeheartedly because He is worthy of our wholeheartedness or He is worthy of our full attention. You know, I've seen many people are just going through, I don't know, as, as you have joined, many of you have joined, I don't know if you still got, if this is your devotion, if you consider this evening time as your devotion and you are being blessed by this devotion from this channel. Uh, I don't know how many of you just ignore all the calls and all the texts that you receive. Yeah. Uh, and just press a home button and take a call and yeah, we can listen it afterwards. That's what happens many a time when we start doing, you know, our devotion, there is you know, as I was mentioning the other day, the temptation today is coming very quietly. It can be just a red dot at the bottom of your screen in the form of notification or just a tinting sound that enables you to distract from what you are seeking in the morning. So I encourage everyone to have, as, as someone has commented also, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and also your mind, and also your potential. That is how you and I must seek Him. That's what Jeremiah 29, 13 says. You will seek me. And what's the next word that says it is? It says that, and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You know, it's so beautiful, my dear friend. I can't really express and I can't just limit my, my words will be limited when I start explaining when we seek the presence of God. It is, it's not a mere experience that we have, but every time we sit to hear the voice of God, we will be moved in our hearts. I'm sure to say, my dear friend, when you sit to seek Him, with all your heart, he will, he will definitely be found to you. It is no secret. It is no secret. But as Isaiah 59, 1 also suggests that it is our sins at times, maybe our preconceived notions about the situations which will stop us from seeking him with all our heart. You know, seeking him, See, it must be seeking Him with all our heart, or it should not. It should not be called as seeking Him at all. Either we must seek Him with all our hearts, or the. Oh, but you know what's the beauty about God? Though we seek Him with all our hearts or not, He still understands, and He still says, "Come on, child, come, come, walk to me. You, you will find me. You, you give it, give your everything." You give your burden to me, you give your pressure, you give your tensions and whatever you are facing in your life, give it to me. I am going to take care of it. That's the beauty of this God that we serve, my dear friend. So in this time, I want to encourage you to seek him with all your heart. And that's what the psalmist also says in Psalm 27. He says, right, that's the later verse that I've put there. My heart says of you, seek his face. Lord, your face I will seek. Oh, this is where we have to actually maybe stop what we are saying and, and we have to start thinking, Lord, my heart says that I have to seek your face. And then says, Lord, as my heart is saying, I should seek your face. Lord, let me seek your face. 
His face has its glory. His face has its countenance. And you know what? When the angels see him face to face in heaven, you know what they respond? They respond, holy, holy, holy. You know, seeing yes. him. When they see him face to face, you know, their heart is there. Their spirit is there. They are in its complete form there. And when they see him, they say, they respond in his majesty. So I just want to check our hearts. I just want us to check our hearts. Am I seeking? I just want to start it with myself. I am not preaching to you. I am just seeking my own heart. Am I seeking the Lord with all yes. my heart? Yes. I need to seek the Lord. As you are, as you are watching this live, I encourage you to speak this, Lord. I want to seek your face, Lord. Yes. Wholeheartedly. Yes. Wholeheartedly. My dear friend, my dear friend, I encourage you to pray while you are watching this life. If God starts speaking to you right now, right there, kneel. And God is definitely going to help you. Oh, our God, our God is such a great God. I still remember one boy once said to me, Anna, Anna, I'm still having those negative thoughts in my mind. I'm still having those, you know, that fornicatory and thoughts about this girl in my mind. I'm unable to overcome them. Then, you know what happened? I told him the previous Sunday, Tami, you do one thing. Whenever you are having this thought, no matter where you are, you just kneel down and start praying. And, you know, two couple of days later, we went and we went to a, you know, this Pani Puri, Pani Puri vendor and we, we are start, we've started eating Pani Puri there. And you know what happened? All of a sudden, while he was being, you know, while his cup is being filled with the Pani Puri, he kept that bowl aside and he started kneeling there and started asking, oh, Lord, I need victory. You know? I was really surprised. You know, why was I surprised? It's easy to say, but you know, it's very difficult. It's totally an another thing to practice what we say. I yes. don't want to be a person who just says, who just collects everything from Bible cross-referential or pericopal, some theology for, or that theology, but I want to experience what I'm preaching to you, my dear friend. You know, when that boy knelt down and started praying, Lord, I need your help to overcome. I am moved, my dear friend. I was literally moved to tears. I don't know what that boy prayed. I started crying there itself. Lord, I didn't seek you like this. I didn't seek you like this. You know, that's the encouragement that we find when we read many books or when we see challenging people like that. My dear friend, it is on our side to seek him wholeheartedly. And, you know, when we seek him wholeheartedly, we must remember he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. On that note, we'll come to the next slide, that is, seek him diligently. No, God doesn't deserve anything less than all our effort. It must be all our effort. I repeat, it must be our total effort to seek Him diligently. Yes. It, it, it must be 100% or it is of no person. But I am telling you on the other side, He still understands. He still is able to, He is able to, you know, see our situations and can relate and he and he always says that come to me all you that have been made him i will give you rest is there is there greater hope than all all that we are hearing amidst of the covid 19 crisis and also the gas leakage that we've heard this morning though these things move us these move us we still seek his face for the salvation of our country you know what that's what daniel prayed right he said lord lord consider the sin of the nation as mine ah i, I don't understand that my dear friend I, I hope we all 
we all have understood it in the way that we shouldn't that we should actually understand it we've understood it all wrong we are not really taking the responsibility you know that's what you know the famous verse if my people who call who are called by me by my name you know you know what's the verse We all know that we're Second Chronicles seven fourteen, right? It says, "If my people who are called by name shall humble themselves, do not you know, and I will heal their nation and confess their sins." Yes. Oh, that is so. That is so encouraging. So I I want to coin this. We all know that two seven fourteen, two Chronicles seven fourteen. If you can read that, you can just open your Bible and start reading. You know what it says: If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, pray. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. I am referring to seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways, and then the word of God says, "Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land." Seek my face should can also be underlined there, and the and the end of it it says, "I will heal their land." Now, if I say that I am seeking the face of God diligently, where is the healing? That we all should receive in this land, or if I say that I'm humbling myself enough, where is the healing that is due to the land? If I'm saying that I'm praying, where is the healing? So I encourage everyone to reconsider our commitment with God, reconsider what we are calling humility, and reconsider how we are seeking the face of God, and reconsider. From where we have moved away from the way of God, so that God will hear us from heaven, and He will heal our land. So, what does seeking diligently means? This is what it means. To seek God diligently means to seek Him attentively, with zero distractions. With zero distractions. Yeah, you know, I I have this habit of you know fidgeting like. You know, even though we have work or not, we all go through. We have. Uh, I've called it new disease. No, it's something called. It has something to do with your thumb. It goes like this, and it happens only on the walk in the screen. You know, this is new disease that was not being diagnosed anywhere. This is where we are actually losing our attention from various things. If you are in, if you are in college, you'll just you'll just hold your phone and do this. You know, being attentive, and You know we, but when we are seeking God, we must be attentive. He needs hundred percent attention. He deserves it. You must, you and I must keep it in our minds that He deserves all glory, honor, and power and strength. Not only the the things that are pertaining to heaven, but also He deserves your hundred percent attention. And secondly. You must be. You must seek him diligently. Means three things. You must seek him attentively. You must seek him consistently. You know, consistency is the key, as the world calls it. But seeking his face consistently will renew our mind, will change our heart, and will change what we like, and will change, and will be changed how we treat people. And will also be changed how we judge people. You know, many people these days tell me, "Anna, I'm not able to forgive that person. Anna, I'm not able to just, you know, I'm not able to get rid of these negative thoughts that are coming into my mind against someone." Let me encourage you. Let your devotion be consistent. Let your devotion be attentive. You know. I don't know how. What was the last time you you held your pen and started or jotting down all all things that you should actually overcome in your life? It's always good to do the homework, 
that is how a diligent what that is what a diligent student does i still remember when i'm doing my engineering i still remember i used to make a mark of what are what all topics i have covered but we hardly see ourselves doing it with respect to god who needs more attention our god needs more attention than what we give to our academics right he needs our attention or we should seek him attentively we should seek him consistently and thirdly we should also seek him persistently persistence oh i i don't you know i don't think that our prayers can actually move god and you know turn the situation upside down but when we are persistent in seeking his face i i love what god speaks about moses in exodus chapter 33 you know what god speaks about moses and lord said to moses exodus chapter 33 verse 17 and repeat exodus chapter 33 verse 17 and here it says i will do the very thing you have asked because i am pleased with you and i know you by name oh my dear friend if god could testify something like this about moses i just want to check as i am seeking him lord what would you say about me lord can you say that i am good and faithful servant lord can you tell me that i am a good steward in all that you in all the work that you have allotted me lord can you testify about me that i am faithful my dear friend persistence persistence in seeking him will change you from your limited understanding into a widened understanding you will you will see things differently you will understand people differently you will be the salt of the world and also the light that was set on the mountain top on the hill top we will be a blessing when we diligently seek him i don't know what commitments you have i don't know what difficulty you might be going through but i want to encourage you seek him now now as you are watching as you are watching this right pray this prayer lord i will seek you i have said the lord always before me because he is at my right hand i shall not be moved says the psalmist oh i want to seek you right before me lord my screen time is more than my seeking time lord. is it not true my dear friend i'm not comparing these two things it would be very it would be very funny if i start comparing the usage of our mobile mobile device and also the time that we spend in prayer but you know it's very funny that we give more priority to the screen than to the face of god so to diligently seek him we should understand that we are seeking him attentively and consistently and persistently no matter what happens i still follow no that's what the song says i have decided to follow jesus that that shows is the attentiveness and the consistency and the persistence in following christ yes Ah, that I want, my dear friend. That I want you to have this evening. I want you to have that that real devotion coming out of your heart. That cry really coming out of your heart and saying, "Lord, I set you before my eyes. I want you more than anything in my life right now, right now, Lord. Be it unto me now, Lord, not tomorrow, Lord." i've i've enough procrastinated things yeah we, we have been the champions of procrastination i myself but i want to set the lord always before me because he is at my right hand he is before my eyes i will not be moved 
Check what moves you, my dear friend. What is moving your heart? Is it the presence of God that is moving your heart? Or just some emotional drama that is happening around? Or some novel that inspires you? Check your moves and what is moving you. Because what moves you will actually make you to move for something. So what is moving your heart? Is it the voice of God? Is the small, gentle voice of God says, and He knows, and, and you know what God says because I know your name. He knows us by name. He's going to call you by name, and we have to respond. Lord, I've always said before. You know, we all fail sometime, my dear friend. Let not failure discourage you. And the enemy comes to you and says, that's it, Baya. You, you just pack up your clothes and go. Enough, enough. You failed enough. But Jesus never closed the door. He has never shut the door on our face, even when we fail. Because he did not shut the door. It gives me more, more humility and more confidence in approaching the throne of grace, in approaching the cross of Calvary and seeking the forgiveness at the foot of the cross, asking Jesus, Jesus, I want you to be the number one priority in my life. Yes. That is devotion. That is devotion. That is the devotion that I'm talking about. I want God to be the number one priority in my life. It's not in the morning, it's not in the evening, but it is now. Now, he put it. Abhi. That's the beauty, which brings me to the last, the last, the first point that I've mentioned is to seek him with all your heart and to seek him diligently. And thirdly, to seek him continually. You know, sometimes we, we are very much accustomed to seek his hand. That means, uh, to seek his hand means to seek what he can do. No, God, Lord, I know that you are God, that you can do this, do that, do that, do that. Lord, please, Lord, help me to, this, to do this, help me to do that. Yeah, God understands. But after your all requests, he says, child, please pray now. Yes. Because our prayers are filled with petitions. And they are only filled with petitions where we hardly find time in our prayer where we can actually commune with God, talk to yes. God, where we can yes. hear to his small, gentle voice. That is what yes. I mean when I am referring to devotion, to hear his voice. It can be anything. It can be hearing his voice. You know, it can be peace in your heart. It can be a natural manifestation. It can be anything. I'm not concerned about how God speaks to the different people of different denominations. But God is a speaking God. He speaks to us. He will deliver us. He will help us. He will uplift us. He will comfort us no matter what we are going through in our lives. So, so that, that idea will leave us to seek him continually seeking god is not one day thing don't think that you know that god god you know the bible speaks about three things right salvation from the past salvation of the present and the salvation about the future you know we were saved from our sins and we are being transformed into the image of his likeness that is the present and we will also be saved from eternal, eternal hellfire. So when I talk about salvation, it's a process that we all should go. It's not an event. Repentance has never been an event. It is a lifestyle. To seek him continually means to seek him in your lifestyle and my lifestyle, my dear friend. Oh, I'm checking my heart. Is my lifestyle has been the replica of Christ's lifestyle. Is it not the reason why you and I are called? Why he chose us, why he saved us, and why 
he made us to watch this live all the viewers is it not the reason that christ wanted us to be his replica replica in our own places it should start at your home it should start now you start replicating christ you know we are the people who get you know very soon we are agitated and so soon will be very uncomfortable and start shouting yelling oh my dear friend to seek him consistently we need to have one thing that i want to focus to seek him consistently you and i need absolute surrenderance you know the anna the other day was talking about surrenderance I, I was, it happened for me to listen to a couple of minutes. Yeah, surrenderance is the key. The time that you spend in the presence of God will never, not even a single second that you seek Him diligently will go in vain, my dear friend. You tell to your soul, my soul, my soul, why are you distressed? Why are you down? God, you know, the beauty in the statement. but god god can do the most impossible thing so that we submit to his authorities we submit to repentance through repentance we submit to him and we submit our self you know this self when i'm talking about myself i'm talking about the self that i have in me which tries to take the image of christ from me and tries to establish my own image you know what john says he must increase and i must yes. increase yes that is the, you know that is the essence of seeking him continually he must increase christ must increase the winningness of christ must increase and the victory of my sinful life over my sinful life must increase and i myself my notions my you know the things that contradict me at the foot of the cross must decrease if that is our heart cry that is when we can fix our heart on him it doesn't happen like this it doesn't happen uh, while you uh, uh, the moment you are baptized but you know we will be transformed into into his image by day day after day day by day that is when we'll actually move from glory to glory to glory to glory my dear friend i i i i'm i'm just preaching you but i'm just thinking about myself have i said the lord always before me so that i can seek him yes i don't know how many of you are going to pray right after this live but i encourage you to pray right now right now as you are let us ask god lord teach me to seek your face yes my dear friend as you are listening to this we want to give you a couple of times i a couple of minutes of time i just finished it before so that you know you and i can seek him right now lord please lord help me yes. i need your strength yes. to seek you yes. yes my dear friend wherever you are you can just open yes. your mouth if you are in a place put the you know have that act of surrenderance just kneel down Wherever you are, and say unto God, Lord, I surrender myself to you. Yes, Lord. This evening, right now, I want to set you right before me, and I want to ask you to help me, Lord. I want you more than anything, Lord. If my people who are called by name. have humbled themselves and left the wicked ways and sought my face seek my face diligently i will answer from heaven and heal their land 
Lord, we claim this promise during the difficult time that we are going through. Teach us to humble ourselves afresh, Lord. Our attitude is not making us to humble ourselves, Lord. Even my attitudes, my behavioral things, and my preconceived ideas about my own spirituality, which is nothing but a stumbling block, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help me to overcome, Lord. Yes, Lord, we commit every viewer who joined this evening, Lord. All those who have joined, Lord. Please, Lord, teach everyone also the speak. I, I am, Lord. I'm asking you to help me first, Lord. To yes, seek Lord. your face diligently, yes, continuously, yes, and without yes, any hesitation, Lord. Wholeheartedly, yes, diligently, continuously, Lord. Teach us. And guide us in the following prayer session, Lord. Let that be filled with your spirit. And whoever prays, Lord, let your spirit hover upon them. As we are going to pray for the current situation that we are going through, teach us to seek your face diligently. And we ask all these things in most precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.